guy and it's official. Graham Potter is the Chelsea manager. I mean, this is a throw on one side by Jose Mourinho for a combined 2,134 days. So now, giving it to a former Swedish league coach who still looks like he gets haircuts from his mum. Oh, it's almost a disgrace, the ethos of the club. I mean, it's a bit like the United States of America choosing to elect Elijah Wood as president. I'm sorry, I know I already touched on Potter to Chelsea in a previous video, but no, the fact he is now the Chelsea manager almost fills my lungs with a wet hot rage. Having Potter in London, I mean, that should just be restricted to those nerdy bookworms running head first into platform nine and three quarters with their eyes closed. Honestly, the janitors who work at King's Cross, they probably had to sweep nerds' teeth off the floor for the last 20 years. But I knew this was going to happen. A big club would one day inevitably fall for the Potter hype. People say that I'm going with the Potter agenda. No, 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 no. It's the media who have the agenda. This is an agenda driven by the desperate journalists because they so badly want to have one semi-decent England manager out there because, uh, lad, last time England needed a new coach, they had to interview Steve Bruce. I mean, I'm pretty sure that never again did the FA want to have to choose between the manager of Sunderland and Hull. I mean, honestly, back then, Adam Party rejected England to stay at Crystal Palace. It's only a few years ago Gary Monk was getting linked with this job. I mean, uh, lad, right now, the seventh favorite to be the next England manager is Lee Carsley. You know, the bald chicken nugget with 40 Irish caps. I mean, the coach who just lost 6-0 in the MLS is only 20 to 1. I mean, Scott Parker was just sacked at Bournemouth after losing 9-0. And yet, in terms of Englishmen, he's seventh on the list. England are so desperate for an English manager. And so we've all been told to worship at the feet of a Brighton coach. At the risk of sounding like a whole city supporting YouTuber with a haircut resembling Krusty the Clown. Um, here's a quick history lesson. Brian Clough is arguably the greatest England manager of all time. Um, he was offered the Brighton gig once, and uh, quickly dumped him in a heartbeat to instead just go and do a month's work at Leeds. I mean, tell Cluffy now that Chelsea were taking the Brighton and Hove Albion manager, he'd fall all over your shoes. Well that's everything Chelsea had built for the last two decades, and you're now giving the job to Britain's flavour of the month. I mean, right now, you're all swatting up a potter ball. Uh, soaking in his methods, his style of play, the name of his dog. Uh, considering he looks like your typical dull middle-aged man, uh, who probably eats Weedabix with a fork. I mean, he's probably named his dog something like, I don't know, George. A name about as exciting as a butterfly's poo. Honestly, I am on the right side of this potter fence. You know who's not? Chris Hamill at Football Daily. Really? You wanna be on his side of the fence? Someone that looks like he drinks red wine and eats lipstick for tea? But, no, you don't sack Mourinho, you don't sack Ancelotti, and you don't sack Conte, only to wind up with a former Swansea and Brighton coach. You were a pointy a manager who last season was booed off by the Brighton fans. Brighton and Hove Albion. I remember in Potter's interview, he was indignant, reacting to this as if, oh, the Brighton fans had just attacked his grandma on the bus. No, they were booing because they were sick to the teeth of the fact that they hadn't seen their team win in 11 games. I don't care who you are, Chelsea Football Club should never be appointing a manager who just six months prior was losing six games in a row and scoring once. Lads, Graham Potter is going to be managing in the Champions League. In a few weeks, Graham Potter is going to be at the San Siro. What? I mean, lads, Zlatan Ibrahimovic has already told everyone that he didn't know who Ralph Rannick was. Do you think anyone in Milan knows who Potter is? Honestly, when he tries to get into the ground, the Italian police will probably think he's just a ticket tout. And let's be honest, the guy might look like Michael Sarah with a beard. Yes, he might look about as imposing and threatening as Winnie the Pooh playing the flute, but he has an ego too. According to the papers, he was irked that Manchester United did not approach him after sacking Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah, Brighton had just finished 16th, and he feels entitled to the biggest job in the country. Can someone remind Potter that Brighton didn't manage to win a home game until nearly February and he thought he should have received the Manchester United job? <laughs> is this a joke? This is a massive lack of ambition. Lads, under the previous regime, the goal for Chelsea, ever since around 2009, was to hire Pep Guardiola. That was the dream. I mean, it, it was an obsession. The man who had to reject Chelsea six times. The game was perfect, possession-based ball, and to a devastating degree. I mean, from 2010 until 2016, every time they sacked a manager, they always, always sounded out Pep first and gave him first dibs on the job. And so now, instead of Pep ball, it's Potter ball. I mean, to quote the great Will Smith, there's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. Yeah. So if Pep was plan A, then what on earth is Graham Potter? Plan B? T? B? Uh, how far down the alphabet do you want to go? Well, I mean, uh, 
What's after Z? If I'm a Chelsea fan, this move disgusts me. Again, I've already said it. The guy who was outperformed by Frank Lampard in the championship three years ago. I mean, his first job in English football, he was given a comfy job for a Swansea City who had just been relegated from the Premier League. And they were handed mega parachute payments to help them back up. And according to the bookies, they were favoured to finish second. Uh, instead, under Potter, they lost 19 times and finished 10th. And then he gets rewarded with the Brighton job. And Oakley looked like he was squinting into the sun. I mean, by the way, under Chris Uden, Brighton had won three of their final 23 league games of the season. I mean, a month before getting sacked, he was watching his Brighton team lose it home to Bournemouth by five goals to nil. So it's fair to say Brighton we're desperate. So Potter getting that job. I mean again, it's been like going on a date with a woman who's just lost all her teeth and who now just pays strangers for a hug. So getting that unwanted Brighton job in 2019. I mean nobody else wanted that gig. Squad morale was on the floor. It was not a coveted job. I mean again, it was like when Steve Cooper, Potter's successor at Swansea, took the Nottingham Forest job. Again, after poor old Chris Hewden had ran the team's confidence into the floor. Uh, and again, even more weird coincidences. I've already said this, but Potter used to work as technical advisor for the Ghana women's team. Hewton now does that for the Ghana men's team. It's almost like Potter, Cooper and Hewton's careers are all interwined. I mean a lot of people think that Potter should manage England and yet Cooper is the one who's coached England teenagers. But again nobody wanted that Brighton geek after Hewton. In the same way nobody wants to sit in a cinema seat after the previous guy did a poo in it during Nope. I mean nobody wanted that Brighton job. It's why the next four favourites for the gig after Potter were Frank Lampard of Derby County, Phil Neville of the England women team, Slavisa Jokonovic of Ultra Rafa, and Lee Johnson at Bristol City. Honestly, imagine Potter turning up to an interview with the Seagulls and seeing those four management dunces reading Hello magazines in the waiting room. Honestly, I don't want to be mean, but Neville looks like he'd be better suited to selling sausages out of a van than trying to set up a defence. I mean, when applying for the Swansea job, he was going head-to-head -head with Alan Pardew, Steve McLaren and Chris Coleman. Three promising Premier League coaches in the 2000s, yes. But by 2018, probably all had such little self-belief, they probably began every morning by crying in the sink. I mean, lads, Potter was lucky to be given his big break in an English job. I mean, I'm convinced if he hadn't already accepted an international job that year, then I have no doubt in the summer of 2018, the Swansea boss would have been Ryan Giggs. Yeah, someone about as likeable as a milkshake filled with pig sick. But, and the only reason Potter was ever given a job at Ostersund is because he was mates with Graham Jones. You know, Steve Bruce's former right hand man who weirdly had a contact in Sweden. I don't know who that was. It could have been a dentist in Malmo for all I know. But yeah, Jones also worked on the backroom staff for Roberto Martinez for the last 10 years, which is fitting because that's exactly who Potter is. But more on that later in the bit. But right now, very quickly before I get into the rest of this Potter business, ah, uh, the favourite for the Brighton job is Ange Posteglu. Oh, I'm sorry, but if little sleepy Brighton and Hope Albion, a little village by the sea, if they are able to steal a Celtic manager a few weeks before he's due to compete at the Santiago Bernabeu, then sorry lads, then football is broken. My prediction, it'll be Nathan Jones from Luton Town. Yeah. About as exciting as toenail soup. I mean, by all means, Tony Bloom. I mean, yeah, give Rachel Pochettino a ring, but be prepared for him to even react to that phone call as a personal insult. You know, I feel like a balding middle aged man who just works in a pizza shop in Wigan. It's been like him asking out Cameron Diaz. Yeah, she's probably just gonna go then look in the mirror and cry. Britain, keep trying to make Potter happen. Please stop! In the same way the internet keeps trying to convince me that Harry Styles is interesting or exciting. Yeah, about as exciting as eating toast in the bath. I mean, in the same way Styles is now gonna be in a Hollywood film, Potter's gonna be in the Champions League. No! I've been around too long. I've seen this all before. Average, painfully average, British bosses always get back for jobs way above what they deserve. Don't believe me? Look at this. Alan Kirby reveals how close he came to get a Liverpool job for Rafa Benitez. Manchester United manager sees Steve McLaren as successor. Owen Coyle, not Arsenal Wenger, should be Arsenal manager. A bridge too far? Steve Clark says Rafa Benitez abuse wouldn't put him off managing Chelsea one day. Whelan, Paul Jewell would take England job. Chris Wilder backed as the perfect man to turn around Arsenal or Manchester United. Gareth Southgate on Manchester United's managerial shortlist. Scott Parker emerges as shock favourite for Tottenham job. Yeah, is that what you wanted to see? Did you all want to live in a world where Owen Coyle was Arsenal manager? Where Paul Jewell is telling David Beckham what to do? Where Scott Parker is replacing Josie Mourinho? And Steve Clark is trying to win the Champions League? No! Potter is just the English Roberto Martinez. Who, yeah, like Potter, also had a pretty rubbish playing career too. I mean, forget the Spanish accent. You might think, oh, like Mikel Arteta, he was just another Barcelona reject, right? 
No. No, he was just a sluggish defensive midfielder for Wigan, Motherwell, and Walsall. You know, he was a bit like Xabi Alonso. If Xabi Alonso's legs had been crushed by a truck. Anyway, like Potter, he did okay as manager of Swansea. Then got a middling Premier League job at Wigan, who were like the 2000s answers to Brighton. You know, a small club punching above their weight. Martinez, like Potter, got the team to play with the ball on the floor and yeah, pulled off some lovely wins against big teams. Oh yes, Potter saw Brighton beat Manchester United 4 0. Yeah, well, um, Wigan. Wigan beat Chelsea 3-1 in 2010, and Chelsea were a much, much better team. Champions of England at the time. They even won the FA Cup, and he was reportedly then offered a massive job at Liverpool. Dave Whelan was saying he'd one day go on to manage Barcelona or Real Madrid, and then he goes on to fail at Everton. This, yes, he's got a good job in Belgium, but as far as club football goes, he is a failed Everton coach. Yes, Belgium is a good gig, but lads, the elite managers don't want international football, so in reality, if he were back in club football, I think by now he'd probably be the coach of Norwich. Yes, Norwich City. That's his level. Potter is the modern day Martinez and he's getting the Chelsea job. This is going to be ugly. I am so disappointed in Chelsea because they never used to fall for this British hype nonsense. I mean, the perfect example about Chelsea have continued to show that they are better than bowing to the media darling was back in 2013 when David Moyes was hot property and was being called the chosen one so many times you'd assume he just stumbled under the set of the Matrix 4. But yeah, Chelsea had been linked to the move for Moyes when he was at Everton in the spring of 2013 but clearly thought better of it and appointed a real European powerhouse in Josie Mourinho instead and won the league. Let's be honest, okay? Premier League chairmen are mostly ignorant. That's why Potter was able to live in the Swedish hills for eight years before anyone paid attention. I mean, lads, you would think an English coach taking a team from the fourth division in Sweden into the Europa League, you think that would be noteworthy, right? But nobody seemed to notice. Lads, can you imagine if Eddie Howe had taken Little Bournemouth from League 2 into the last 32 of the Europa League? Oh, forget Newcastle. His next job would have been Old Trafford. And lads, this, this game is the only reason Potter is Chelsea boss. He masterminded a 2-1 win for Ostersunds at the Emirates. That game put him on the map and three months later had the Swansea job. But lads, three years before that, Arsenal lost at home to Olympiacos and Marco Silva was heralded as a genius and soon got the job at Hull. Ah, uh, yeah. Would you have made Marco Silva the Chelsea boss? No, stick him in a dugout at Stamford Bridge. I mean, he'd be more out of his depth than a hamster in a pond. I mean, lads, in a world where it's so easy to get a management job, so long as you play for the club, well, Potter is a former Southampton left back. He would have been the perfect candidate for the club in March 2018, right? Nope. Instead, they hired a Jurassic Park themed meat cake in Mark Hughes instead. I mean, similarly, Potter's former club, Stoke, hired Paul Lambert in January 2018. Yeah, a move about as ambitious as choosing to eat an old man's hair off the barbershop floor. I mean, he spent three years at West Brom was a player, and yet they were sooner offering contracts to Alan Pardew and Darren Moore. Not even Birmingham City in the Championship wanted their homegrown left back as manager, choosing to instead just ring up Harry Redknapp. Nobody wanted Potter! In his four seasons in English football, he has lost to Southampton, Man City, Chelsea, Bristol City, Aston Villa, Man United, Leicester, Liverpool, Sheffield United, Tottenham, Stoke, Everton, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich Town, Norwich, Arsenal, West Brom, Derby County, Wolves, Leeds, Burling, Nottingham Forest, Newcastle, QPR, Fulham and Rotherham. This is a guy who's now lost six times to Aston Villa. He has had 26 1-1 draws. Oh, Chelsea fans, have fun being bored out of your tree. Honestly, it's going to be a lot of possession-based football with no cutting edge. I mean, what's Potter's transfer strategy going to be? What? Is he going to buy Billy Gilmore again? Or just chuck in a £20 million bid in January? Like... What? There is a reason these monster clubs need a worldwide name where they're standing in the game to manage your team. That's how you attract players. Lads, David Moyes is a very good coach, but don't forget, he signed two players at Old Trafford, Maran Fellaini and Juan Mata. Nobody else wanted to come. Like Cesc Fabregas, Gareth Bale, Thiago Alcantara, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, after a one hour phone call with the former Everton and Preston boss. Yeah, it's about as inspiring as going on a date with your aunt. I'm like, oh, who is Potter going to bring? Surely he will go back to Brighton. Almost as a comfort blanket. In the same way Moyes targeted Fellaini and Leighton Baines, I see Maz Saicedo, Adam Webster and Leandro Trossard coming through the Stamford Bridge door. Thrilling, right? Chelsea need to buy a world-class gold machine. What does Potter know about working with world-class strikers? These are the levels of forward he's had to use. Ollie McBurney, Neil Maupay and Danny Welbeck. I mean, what happens when Romelu Lukaku returns next summer? Potter is just gonna be like Moise. Just constantly grateful for this massive opportunity. Lads, in the blink of an eye, he's gone. From having to shower in pillows of mud on the side of a Swedish road to now Chelsea FC. I mean, don't forget, during the 2000s, when his club were winning league titles and competing in Champions League finals, he was studying at the University universities of Leeds and Hull. Honestly, he's probably just a poor student, probably living on a diet of Freddo's, chicken wedges, and he'd probably have to keep begging the librarian to let him in so he could poo. And now, to be given Chelsea, 
This job is far too big for him. Honestly, this man, he is going to be sacked inside six months. And then, after all that, his bright and success will just be forgotten. I mean, recency bias. I mean, does anyone still talk about Lampard's good work at Derby County? I mean, don't forget, he utterly obliterated a tactical legend like Marcelo Bielsa in the championship playoffs. He took his Derby team to Old Trafford and knocked Josie Mourinho out of the cup. But one high profile sacking at Chelsea later, and people talk about him as if he's got cheese between the ears. Honestly, once Chelsea chew you up and spit you out, your next gig is just gonna be a newly promoted struggling team like Sunderland in November 2023. Oh, Graham, you're about to kill your career. Anyway, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know how will Potter do with Chelsea. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.